Staying overseas, we've got Foreign Minister Penny Wong. As we know, she has now landed in Jordan. That's the first stop on her Middle East tour. Now, there's been, I think, a, a valid backlash here back home in Australia. Now, for some strange reason, the Foreign Minister is refusing to visit the sites of those October 7 Hamas terror attacks uh, when she visits Israel later this week. Now, overnight, Hamas has released new video announcing the death of two Israeli hostages. Colin Rubenstein is the executive director of the Australia, Israel and Jewish Affairs Council and joins me now. Colin, how disappointed are you that the foreign minister won't for herself go and see where those atrocities took place? Uh, good afternoon, uh, Steve. Look, uh, we're extremely disappointed uh, to go all that way and not take a couple of hours to go down south and, and see the sites of this barbaric massacre and the implications and consequences that it's had for Israel. It's darkest day ever. Uh, the biggest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust. Uh, to see the ravage that was wrought down there, I think is an essential prerequisite for a visit of this nature. Uh, to understand the impact on Israel, the vulnerability Israel feels and the determination that this can never happen again. And so I, I think uh, it's a very bad look. I wish she would rethink her program. And even as she goes to Israel, I believe, uh, even later today, uh, perhaps she'll rethink it and, and uh, think for the better and decide to go down there. Because uh, I think the... Uh, the criticism in her failing to do so uh, strikes a real chord. It is uh, quite a poor show. Well, when an event like that takes place, which was so horrific uh, and so world-changing, I mean, it'd be like going to New York after September 11 uh, if you were a visiting senior Australian cabinet minister and not going downtown to see where the Twin Towers stood. It, it just makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Absolutely. And of course, uh, many other foreign ministers and political leaders have, uh, have absolutely gone down there. And their, uh, their impressions, of course, uh, are, uh, you know, very, very telling. Uh, you, you know, David Cameron, for example, the Foreign Secretary of the UK, Simon Birmingham, the Shadow Foreign Minister, former Prime Minister Scott Morrison. Look, it's a short hop, you know, 60 to 90 minutes each way. And uh, seeing the 22 uh, kibbutzes that were attacked, you know, in such a vicious way, the hostages who were dragged away in such appalling circumstances, hostages, of course, that are still being held, over 120 of them to this very day, and used in this uh, shocking, appalling hostage uh, diplomacy uh, that we're seeing uh, predictably from Hamas now. So for Australia to live up to its re reputation, uh, to be a respected figure on the world stage and to be a reliable partner in the exercise of trying to move things in a better direction than worse, I would have thought the foreign minister would want to understand uh, exactly the implications and reverberations of what happened on the day and going to the site in his obvious way to understand a part of that picture. Colin, how upsetting is it for Australian Jews considering that, that Penny Wong is uh, from the Labor left? I mean, the Labor left has been vocal over many years about its support for Palestine. Uh, we don't believe, I don't think, that uh, the, the left has been strong enough in, in its uh, outrage over what Hamas did and this terror attack on Israel. Does that concern you that people at the top of the government, and I, I mentioned obviously Penny Wong, but also Anthony Albanese, don't really believe some of the things that they should be believing here? Well, look, uh, the, the cumulative effect of what we've seen, not only the last three months, but since this government came to power nearly two years ago now, is, is concerning. I mean, look, there are, there are many friends within this Labor government, but unfortunately there are many who've got a chequered career. And we've seen from, you know, very early days one decision after another by this government uh, that has not been well received uh, by not just the Australian Jewish community, uh, but in Israel and, uh, and amongst friends of Israel and uh, al countries allied to us around the world. For example, the government, in, in very short order, reversed the decision 
uh, to recognise West Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Uh, you know, that was quite, uh, quite gratuitous uh, and uh, not well received. Uh, they changed the terminology, uh, talking about illegal set settlements and occupied Palestinian uh, territory. Well, these are disputed territories, and I, I'm not sure that Australia can set itself up uh, as a legal arbiter of these matters and should have done so in this manner. Uh, of course, on the books is uh, of, of Labor Party policy is recognition of a Palestinian state. To its credit, the government says we'll only do that when the circumstances are appropriate. Uh, but, but more recently, of course, we've seen other changes, and through this war, we've seen two other disappointing things that have happened. One is the decision, you know, just uh, less than a month ago by Australia at the United Nations to support the resolution uh, for a permanent ceasefire. Now, that contra that's very confusing because it contradicts with the more positive aspects of the government's approach on this war, that what Hamas did on October 7 was appalling, that they should release uh, the, the hostages and they effectively should surrender and it should have no further role in, in uh, what uh, happens after this war. Yet, in calling for an, a permanent ceasefire now, it leaves Hamas in place. I mean, that's very confusing and, and self-defeating. And, and secondly, we've just seen in recent days uh, the International Court of Justice, uh, with, with this appalling uh, case that South Africa has brought, alleging Israel is perpetrating genocide uh, in Gaza. Uh, well, this is inverting reality on its head. If anyone's committing genocide here, it's absolutely Hamas. It's got genocide in its charter written all over its face and in its actions to destroy Israel and kill as many Jews as possible. And that's what they're being acting on and promoting it and gloating about the terror and the murder. So it is disappointing uh, that Australia seems to be taking the stance that they will not join with our allies, specifically the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada and Germany, who have rejected this uh, claim by South Africa in the course and said this is the farcical, improper case in the American terms, completely without merit and based on factual inaccuracies and misrepresentations. Australia, you know, just holding its hands here, and I think the Australian public has a right to know what the stance of this government is on this appalling uh, malicious case that South Africa has brought. Well said, Colin. We'll keep an eye on uh, Minister Wong's visit in the Middle East. Colin Rubenstein there from the Australian Israel and Jewish Affairs Council.